Cool, let's go ahead and start. Hey, welcome to TDD Academy. I'm Lance Surkind, and that guy is... David Koontz, hi. David Koontz is our solopreneur who's working on an iOS app where he's gonna make some Benjamins. It's a, so, so he, and he's printing money with it, I guess. We're gonna find out later when he comes up with that uh, user story to, to, to print yeah. out those dollar bills. Uh, or right. no, Benjamins, that's a hundred dollar bill. That's a, that's a good unit of, of uh, work there. Um, yeah, so last time we, we uh, last time on the show, oh boy, let me think if I remember what we did last time. We did, we did some refactoring. Oh, closure, open, close. Taylor Swift, that, that guy is always sending us new ideas. He rolled us a new keynote and said, hey guys, you should think about your design, solid code principles, open to, open to uh, extension, close to modification. So what he's saying is our classes ought to be open to being extended and, and, and used by other, other people, but, but they should be closed to modification, meaning um, breaking the class or breaking the contract that's already there. So anything else comes to mind, David, on that? Uh, we kind of finished up with the big refactoring of taking the uh, at bat out of uh, out of the player, uh, out of the uh, player, and moving it into its real home, which is a uh, game. And now we have a, a game inside our game uh, that represents the ball game. We'll probably start using game for a lot of um, the appropriate things now. Is that a swift structure or class? Um. I assume it's a class, but I don't really know. I We're pretty classy to... people. I bet it was a class. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Right. 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 A class. So uh, um, today, we we you know, during our pre-show meeting, we talked about uh, planning out our project a little more. Um, shall we go through that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Do you have a, a note or should I open the note? I'll bring it up on the screen here. Okay. Um, if we're uh, broadcasting my screen, I don't know yes, if we are. Yes, we are. All right. So. Okay. Um, yeah. We've got. Uh, uh, go ahead. Sorry. Topics for today show. So user stories. So um, let's go through some of those user stories. Nice. Uh, yeah, so David, what's a user story? Like, are you going to tell me a story? I'm going to tell you a story. Yeah, it's a very short and sweet reminder to have a conversation with your team about a particular thing to be done. Uh, it's usually written from the viewpoint of a user of your software that you're writing. So um, it's written from the viewpoint of the people using the software, not from uh, the software's perspective or your maintenance people's perspective, typically. So, oh, that's the um, user part then. Okay. Yeah. It, it comes from that name. Um, and there's kind of classic forms of it. Um, that really, anything that will remind the users, I often think a, a, a picture in two or, or two or are very good user stories. Uh, remind the uh, developers what the story is all about, get them in context and and uh, tell them what you want the software to do. So um, we've got a few done user stories, which is display a, a player at bat and scroll through all the at bats. So those are the two that are on the screen there with the nice check marks. Nice, can I read one of those for a second? Just to, so, so as a fan, so that's the, the user. I want to see the player info, jersey number, position, at bat, walk, hit, etc. So I can envision the game and follow along. All right. Yeah. Um, and how did you decide we're done with that? Um, I have um, a, a view of um, on the screen here when we have our... our um, app up and running and it's running on the display right now then uh we can uh scroll around and see uh the various players we've got a bunch of 
example data in there. Um, so we've got uh, James Gosselin is uh, number four. Um, he plays in position five, which is, I believe, third base. And uh, in his in, at bat, he made a K, which is a baseball shorthand for he struck out. Ah, poor James. James struck out. Yeah, that's because he sold the whole company. <laughs> Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. So that that's, makes sense. Um, I, I see what you're saying. I see the user can see exactly what you uh, what you produce. All yeah. Right. So those are those are working uh, in our software at a very early age of our software. Um, we had a conversation about shipping when we might want to ship, and um, we've got to add quite a few pieces of functionality before it's it's truly going to have any uh, legitimate value to a user. Uh, right now, we're just kind of reading canned example pieces of data, and we're going to have to work on uh, being able to enter uh, the information and that sort of thing. So what, what looks like... Um... What are we working? How do I say this? So uh, oh, let's take a look at those user stories for a moment again. And we'd have the scroll through at bats. I saw you scrolling. That was cool. And yeah. done stories above the line. Oh, I see what you got here. All right. Story runner advancement and priority one minus a. Ooh, what's going on there? I mean, one minus a. B. One a. One dash a. Okay. Um, and it's kind of this, for me, as the product owner, I went through and, and uh, prioritized the story we wrote and came up with a priority one, two, three sort of system. And then uh, some things grouped together pretty well, like um, the two, uh, the priority two stories seem to all be about data entry and actually being able to um, user actually score a game on their iPad and record that data and, and then how we, what, are, what can we do with it? And so that's really going to be exciting because I don't know how to do that, but we're going to have to start doing that soon. Yeah. And, um, and then up here, um, uh, I dropped in a nice little uh, example nice. of a game here on a real scorecard so you can see examples of it. And um, one of the things we're going to want to do is uh, we don't currently deal with advancing runners and that sort of thing. So, um, and, and we don't currently score the game when a, when a runner crosses home plate. That's a score. So. Is that important, David? <laughs> <laughs> it's only important if you want to know who wins and loses a game wow. and some people play just for fun so they don't actually keep score in the sandlot and stuff and that's perfectly valid uh use of baseball but um if you're in any sort of league they want to know who's who win and lose who won and lost oh okay all right, so the type A's among the S in the world want some scoring capability. All right, yeah. so so is that what we're going to work on? The one A or one B? Um, that's what be our, our next moves. Yeah, I think so. So it's it's about uh, advancing the runner. So um, as a parent viewing a game, that's the user. Um, I want to associate the runner's actions with the batter and. Um, there in parentheses is an AB4, and that's baseball scoring lingo for advanced batter by batter number four. <laughs> uh, they use a lot of indexing and stuff in uh, baseball. And if you look down here in the scorecard, uh, real faintly, there's a number four in the last row, and that's what that four is relating to there is that when uh, Ortez got up to bat, he advanced the batter um, and that's what AB4 means is that uh, batter four advanced 
the batter that was already on the base. And so he ran to the next base. And so that's what these green oh. uh, things here. And uh, you asked last time, could you recreate the game, you know, by just looking at the scorecard and um, this advancing the batter aspect of it is uh, is kind of the other half. It, it's um, half of it is what did the batter do? What's the outcome of the bat? Did they strike out? Did they hit a single or whatever? And then the other thing is you got to keep track of of the runners on the base. And so those green uh, in the green marks in there are usually having to do with uh, moving around the bases. Oh, okay. So we look at inning. So an inning, let me see, let me try this out for a little bit and I'll probably get it wrong. So um, I'm looking at the Bellhorn and Reese players and uh, inning one, somebody struck out and that would be... That would be Bellhorn. Um, the reason Reese is in there is that he came in and batted in position number two in the lineup. Uh, okay. The lineup is one, two, three, four. And Reese came in in the eighth uh, inning and substituted in for Bellhorn at the eighth inning. Re Bellhorn came out, Reese went in and went into the lineup at lineup position number two. Okay. So those are lineups. I got that's my first mistake. I thought those were innings. Okay, cool. That makes more sense because that's kind of well, how you were reading it to me a second ago. And then somebody yeah. got. BB on the first base, so. Okay, BB stands for base on balls. So they got to the base on a ball, on four balls, and mm. that's a walk mm. in, the, in the terminology. Mm -hmm. and, and that was in the second inning. So innings are vertical here. Okay. So okay. inning number one is the first column there. First row. And then, and then, um, let me see. Bellhorn struck out in uh, inning number one and got a, a, a walk in inning number two. Um, and then uh, in inning one, uh, after Bellhorn, then uh, Ramirez comes up and he gets a 1B, which is a first base. He gets a single. Um, and then later he's advanced by batter number four. Oh to second base, and then he's advanced by batter number four to third base, and then he's advanced to, to home by batter number four. So we don't actually know how those three events happened here, but we know all that happened while Ortez was at bat. Okay. Um, Cortez, or you mean Orts? Or Orts, I'm oh. sorry. Or I'm not saying his name right. I don't know who these people are. Some somebody in Boston, Red Sox. Oh. Um, but then if we look at what Orts did, he got a home run, HR, mm -hmm. and they also color in the diamond. Uh, uh, and oh, so, true. getting a home run, he scores everybody in front of him. Yeah. Right. So. That makes sense. So he scored. So Ramirez scored from that home run is what, I, mm -hmm. what I'm reading here. And, and I those two, I think, and Damon, well, Damon was a uh, Damon. When we look at the very top, he, something happened with the red line. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it doesn't look good. Yeah. It, it's not good. Yeah. It's not good. If you're, if you're uh, on that team, um, he had gotten safely to third base. Um, by stealing second base here uh, and then advancing on batter number three's um, at nice. bat. He, okay. he got to third base, but then uh, he was thrown out, T.O., thrown out to uh, number seven. And uh, seven, I think that means that number seven, which is the left fielder, uh, threw him out on the way to home plate, and he was t he was tagged out or whatever by the catcher, probably. Oh, okay. Um, I'm I'm noticing some new uh, possible requirements. Is I'm seeing like colored tags now, um, and 
Well, yeah, the diamond. I like how you, this is the first time I learned about this, about how you use the diamond shape to score a game. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think that that kind of makes sense. I mean, I'm not going to say I would be would get this right all the time, but that I so so it looks like the result is on the first column, which is a inning. Inning. Okay. First uh -huh. column. No, the first column here isn't an inning, right? That's a Oh, is that an inning? Um, the one up at the top here, yeah, um, is an is an inning, and it okay. it goes for nine players. Okay, it's okay. it's a column of nine uh, player places. Um, in this case, I just cut it off short here, but oh, um, got it. Yeah, all right. Um, so yeah, so the first inning, and then some action happened, and. Damon's out. Bellhorn mm -hmm. didn't get anywhere, struck out. And then Reese didn't show up yet because he's in the later inning, I guess. Yeah. Huh. All he right. subs in at that position in the batting lineup later on in the eighth inning. Oh. Um, and so okay. that's, that, that's a, like a fast forward or a <laughs> – but it's, it's a way of keeping who, track of who – who took whose place in substitutions? Yeah. And then Ramirez got scored and Orts scored. So it looks like he got scored uh -huh. too. Uh, those little dots, does that mean RBI? The two dots? Those two, no, those two dots are, are runs, really. Oh, okay. Um, those two blue dots are runs. Um, and then there's um, circles with red uh, in it, ones and twos, and there's a three down here but i cut the graphic off and those are outs so um who made outs and and that sort of thing so that's so i just clearly a, see that we would need an expert to build this software because that's that's pretty complicated <laughs> yeah yeah it's a, it, it is an amazing complicated system um that dates back into the 1800s um and and has a lot of variation on how you do it and, and what you do, but um, it's a record keeping system uh, for baseball. And so, so now when we move it to the smart devices, it, it'll be able to go like for another thousand years and uh, cool, you know, it'll be all digital. <laughs> yeah, maybe, depends on whether it becomes a, you know, a stone ax and gets thrown aside or what, but uh, yeah. All right. Okay. Well, cool. So, um, I'm, uh, w what's our next move today? Are we, uh, going to start on this story or are we going to talk about, I mean, we had a lot of exciting conversations about, um, accessing class objects and. <clears throat> yeah, we did. I, I guess maybe a little bit of retrospective of the project so far. It's, okay. it's, uh, it's almost, um, uh, New Year's Eve? <laughs> That's yeah. when everybody does a, a yearly retrospective, right? <laughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna New Year's this baby up. All right. <laughs> well, so um, you know, we've been working on this for probably this is probably an eighth or ninth session we've yeah. had. Yep. I'm having a lot of fun. I'm learning a lot by doing it. Um I'm it I'm constantly learning something and and spend a lot of time then throughout the week trying to figure out how to put something in practice and one of the things we talked about was uh good object oriented encapsulation um and so um in trying to uh do that good object oriented encapsulation one of the things I did was was go through and take uh, our our basic uh, model games and set, set them uh, to uh, private uh, and, and added uh, setters for them and that sort of thing. Um, and that added a good bit of, I, I call that kind of boilerplate code. It, it's um, from my days from yesteryear writing getters and setters for Java code all the time. It was, uh, something that you hated having to do. And actually after a while, the, the uh, 
IDEs learn to write that code for us, and you could auto create that sort of code. Um, I don't think the Swift stuff does that. Uh, Swift as a language seems to have gotten a little bit better with their access control stuff. Um, and so we talked about that. Um, I added all this stuff, but I'm not sure that it didn't. I, I'm, I question whether or not it was valuable time to add that sort of encapsulation beyond kind of the natural encapsulation that uh, having no access uh, modifiers in front of uh, um, the keywords there would do that. And uh, you looked into that for a minute, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's interesting. The um, uh, Swift is definitely in, in this regard. So um, whenever you do anything in Swift by default, it gives you, uh, can you, do you have a class now that hasn't been touched by us with the adding accessors? What does it look like generically when you create a class? No, I, I changed them all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Game Swift has that and Player Swift has that. Okay. Well, so by default it won't have the word public and private in front of it. It'll just have var number. And uh and that's the usual that's the that's the, the that's what will the IDE builds for you whenever you create a class or you generate if it does any code generation it does this. And it's fair to say, well, why the heck is it doing that? Because it it doesn't really speak to me. And, and I don't think it'll have public in front of your class inning as well. Um, if you created a new class right now, I'm pretty sure it would, it would, it would leave that off. So, so it turns out with Swift that from the get-go, we want to start big picture and think about uh, what are we building. And if we're building something that's going to be a module that's going to be used by other uh, – a module that's going to be used by other applications, uh, then those keywords like public – are really interesting because whenever you put public in front of class inning, David, you're you're committing to um, you are committing to letting other people who use your module they can you they can see that inning class and they'll actually use it. And so later, if you want to refactor it or change your design, you'll end up breaking their code or you'll have to think very carefully uh, about um, you'll have to slow yourself down a little bit and think about well, if I w I want to improve the design. But there's a bunch of things that are public that people could be using or are using. So now I have to think about how to improve my design and still maintain um, uh, backwards compatibility for those users of my old code. So, so that's the, the problem. If you declare things public on a class level or on any of, those, any of those member levels, you're giving people outside of your module access to those things. And, uh, and so in reality... Um, we want to stick with the default most of the time, which is where um, what 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 uh, Swift generally does. Sorry, what does default mean? Default means the default accessibility means everybody within your module can ac access it. Okay. So it's as if there's an internal sitting there. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. There's not um, an internal is internal to the app or the module. Yeah. Um, and um, so if you're if you're writing apps, which Swift was really designed, I suppose, early on to to write good apps, um, kind of the default or the internal level of protection is uh, basically anybody in the app can can see that thing and manipulate it. And so if you start changing things, you're changing it inside your app, and you better know what you're changing and and that sort of thing. Um, so I, it's, it's not, it's not true. I don't know. I wouldn't say it's true, not true object orientation, but it's a different view of what encapsulation meant to OO. And I think it's better. Yeah. I think, I think so too. I think what they've done is, is go, it's important to have invariance and protect your invariants, make them private, but things that can vary and that sort of thing um, can be public and shared. Um, Do you so, have an example where you wanted to add? Okay, so we, we, by the way, so folks, we've talked about don't use publics a lot like it's like you would in Java code. Um, 
stick with the default. But now David's bringing up protect your invariants. So that's where, if you think of last episode when Taylor Swift was talking about open to uh, open to extension but close to to change, um, that close to change part is where 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 that you want to uh, do it. Use the private keyword. So do we? Do you have an example here that where we use the private keyword? Um, I. I don't know if I have a good example that that I can explain or not, but uh, go, any go to, number so might it, be. Oh, game doesn't have one or play any of those. Your your model. Um, no, I I haven't. Okay. Um, okay. I set I went in and and changed them all to uh, public private setters. Yeah. Um. And right. apparently it didn't mind that I forgot a space there. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, so, so yeah, David, you were talking about using, sometimes you want to use private in order to protect your, um, you want to protect things from being manipulated that aren't designed to be manipulated. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that, we also learned in the last episode was something was something about primitives. Using primitives a lot is a smell because it tends it tends to be it causes you to write procedural logic and um, it's better to come up with some semantic class or structure that conveys some some higher level meaning uh, for for that um, and and so a lot of times. What I think will happen with our code, uh, David, is a lot of the primitive stuff will become private. You know, there'll be exceptions, but more of it will be private. And then if they contain other classes, if we have a class that uses other classes through composition and we want to make that visible, we'll probably have, we might still have some um, default properties that are accessible. Yeah, so that shows up here with um, oh, inning top and bottom. Yeah. Um, so inning top is an array of plays, and bottom is an array of plays. And I'm kind of on the fence for, for this, but um, I have uh, appenders, uh, and I have to come up with a, you know, a unique name here because I've got two of them. I can't uh -huh. just say inning append. Yeah. have to append to the top or to the bottom. Um, and um, so th that becomes a little bit longer, or I can allow, um, you know, direct access to the inning from anybody else out in my app, any other objects, and just manipulate it because it's it make it public. Um, throughout or default, my object. which is where it's at right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, so I went through and, and wrote them all to do to make private just to see how much more code and, and stuff oh. it was going to take to do that. And it, it took, uh, it took quite a bit more code. Um, especially given that Swift had all the, all this capability built into its, um, access control uh, internal. So um, I'm not sure it was valuable effort, but um, I did it to see, you know, what the difference was. And, and I, I thought, okay, well, I'll keep doing this for a while and see and keep that pattern up of, of protecting everything and see uh, if it doesn't make the whole app a little bit better. But um, then you came up and said, yeah, maybe uh, the default is is the appropriate level. Yeah. So I don't know what to do. <laughs> well, yeah, don't use public. That doesn't make sense because we're creating a, a, a app on a, on a phone and we're not at this moment in time creating a module to be used by other people. So, so we should have nothing that's ever public. <laughs> so, um, and our form of public within our, our module will be the default. So when we look at when you talk about inning, I don't know when you, you maybe you would change those, the top and bottom to private at one point. I, I'm not sure, a little unclear on, on, on when you were recounting. Yeah, I had them, um, let me back up here. 
Oh, okay. That's, uh, that's kind of the code I have right, right now, um, running and, and working and testing. Um, and so it's called uh, the, the number string there is public and the setter is private. Um, and so down here, then I end up making a public setter function that sets the number. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, so, um, okay, cool. So I have a couple ideas. We could go through here and we could put it back to default. I think that's the right answer. The public doesn't make sense with this new understanding. Uh, it's possible even the last episode I was saying put public because that's what I thought. But I went back and read the Swift book uh, uh, on, on that and realized that public's a pretty big deal. That's a, that's a module. That's public outside your module. Um, so, so we could just go into refactoring that. I have also another proposal um, because I don't know if you know this, David, but... Uh, um, so Taylor sent me, uh, he heard about us, our, our, our chit chat on iMessage, and he sent me a deck about uh, reference architecture. And he says, you guys need to get alignment. He says, I know you're going to be learning new things, and so your alignment will change as you learn. Um, because last episode, probably, we were going, we're going to use lots of publics, and, uh, and, and now we know that's not the right way. We want to use lots of defaults and privates. <laughs> and, and so when we think about working in a big company, we're, you know, I don't know, we're, we're, we're a company of two right now, but it, maybe after you get your, a lot of Benjamins, you're going to have like a, but maybe, what, maybe 500, give or take. Oh, yeah, I people. expect to have to hire 500 people. <laughs> the developers, right, right. Uh, then, then, you know, to get, to get them all to understand the conversations we had, we probably need to write it down. And, uh, and the mechanism he suggested was, was called uh, a reference architecture. Um, so he sent me this deck. If you don't mind, I'll just drop through it. And, yeah. uh, you know, here he is. He's always, he was always breaking about his clothes. The clothes in the code are the measure of the man. Um, he, uh, he was in, he, I think he sent to this to me from his pool. I, you're in Texas, right, David? I wonder yeah. if Taylor, you know, since he's pool and it's this time of year. It must be somewhere. He's either in Texas or Mexico, I'm guessing. But, uh, he, he uh he he was telling he was he was saying like look you guys yet. remember you want your code to be accurate clear and brief and hey, uh, bring it up I can't see it oh sorry oh dear 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 yeah good catch so yeah Taylor he's always he's always sending me these well styled uh, slide decks and uh, he was in front of his pool wherever wherever he lives I really don't know where that guy lives but it must be south of you because I don't think you're in the pool are you David no no not now okay. And uh, it's a little too cold. and uh, here I have to undo something here. <laughs> uh, an ops code is the measure of the man. Keep it trimmed and manicured. Your ACBs. And then he was going into some other details. I don't know. This is probably not helpful for us right now. But he's talking about guard versus if lets, and classes versus structures. And uh, yeah, yeah, the primitive obsession that we talked about last week. But. Uh, he said, you know, there's this, there's this construct to try to get alignment because otherwise you have everybody wearing different pants, for example. <laughs> uh, they're all going to be wearing different styles if you, don't, if you don't tell them about it. You might have the guy with the plaid pants. You know, he's going to write Swift code with lots of publics. Like we're, he heard about us. Maybe he only watched the last episode. So he's going to make a lot of publics. But now later we've discovered, well, actually, we don't want, we want to tone that down. We don't want to have a lot of publics. So, so it's going to be more like the guy in the slacks, you know. We're going to tone it down a little bit. Um, so if we're, going to, if we're going to argue about code, we might as well produce a reference so that we have it written down and so that we can publish it out to, you know, your 500, give or take 20 developers so that they can understand what's the latest and greatest. Uh, of course, as time goes on, the change, our rate of, our rate of change is pretty high because we keep learning new things. But if, uh, uh, there's a point where we'll, we'll be uh, learning less new things, but we'll still make adjustments. So the suggestion is, is to put any kind of reference architecture into the uh, source con control because we'll be changing it and, and, um, and people will, just like code, <laughs> they'll need to update their understanding. Uh, okay, so what's a reference architecture? I mean, that's kind of like big yeah. fancy word, Taylor, you know, he's always coming up with these things. Um, so he, uh, he said, well, you want to start high level and think about, well, how you're building it 
you know? Right now we're using Xcode, that's probably easy, <laughs> Xcode. Uh, are you having multiple modules or not? Right now, answer's no, we have one module. And how are you designing your classes? And that's kind of where we're at. We're like discussing and discovering, do we use publics or not? Do we use privates or not? And uh, what cases do we use privates? And, 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 and what cases do we want to be a little suspicious of primitive obsession? And then test automation strategy. Well, it turns out when we're in, in, in certain classes, we use something called view inspector. And in certain classes, cases, we're just using uh, straight XC test. Um, continuous integration, delivery, maybe, maybe not uh, for us. And then user interface standards, when we start deciding among your teams of, of developers, uh, you might have some, some uh, very, how do I say it, regimented screens where there's not a lot of innovation happening because people like it and people are using it. And then you'll have like the, the edge of where the new features are showing up where there's going to be uh, things changing, which is you, do, you, can't, you can't standardize innovation, so you don't try to do that, but you're trying to create some standards around uh, what's working well so we can keep what's working well. Examples of reference architectures are the Java EE, Java Enterprise. Um, oh my God, EE. What's that stand for? Enterprise <laughs> EJ. Uh, I don't know what the other E what's is. What's the now? other E mean? I forgot. <laughs> anyway, Java EE. Edition. Uh, sorry? Was it edition? Uh, Java Enterprise, Enterprise edition. edition. Ah, you got it. There it is. <laughs> nice. Uh, it was a, a, a useless E. <laughs> it was the extra E. <laughs> yeah. Java E. And then we have the Java Enterprise uh, Java Beans, um, which is probably, I don't know if I, maybe it should be just Enterprise Java Beans. But anyways, those things were well documented. In fact, I bought a, back in the day, I bought a book for Java EE, Java EE, and I read through it, and I thought, wow, this is really interesting, sort of. What I was frustrated about at the time is it didn't really tell me um, how to build an app exactly. It just referred to the patterns of building an app, which wasn't bad. But at that time, I was really looking to get more rubber meets the road, which is actually implementing it. Um, but, but it's a good way, a good tool for when you have like lots of developers or you're creating, you have an industry you're trying to influence so that you can create some alignment so people can get some things done and uh, not break each other. So, you know, this is an, an idea that Taylor was suggesting is, well, so we could go through, we could have a page on, and again, we probably want to want, we're using GitHub, so we could put it in GitHub on a, on a, in our readme, or we put it somewhere in there called reference architecture. This one's our simplest thing, our build systems Xcode, and our module is, I don't even know what our module is called. Um. Yeah, baseball probably. Baseball um, probably. Okay. Baseball <laughs> probably. It's up here. Um, uh, module. Yeah. This the target is baseball. Oh, okay. You're right. Right. Okay, that makes sense. So, uh, uh, so that's easy. So that's like one bullet basically, or or two bullets, and. Uh, the class design is really what we're really discovering and, and trying to understand. We're trying to use Swift in a way that's sensible. And uh, I feel like we've discovered that, number one, we're not, the type for the types of classes, by the way, roughly what types of classes are we building from a high level? Um, we've got model classes and view classes, really. There we are. We have two kinds of classes. And uh, so for model classes, uh, I believe we're trying to use we're, we're doing TDD, and when we're when we're, we're we're adding features, and uh, we're talking about how do we do the design part, and we're saying don't use publics, <laughs> but use the default as public as a pseudo public within our internal module, and then use private for things that we don't uh, care to expose outside of the class, um, and then that's the same with uh, methods and properties, and. I believe, so, so every reference architecture to be really valuable and not just be a wall of words is to show an example of what that looks like. So we could paste in one of our exemplar classes. So if we fix one of those classes, our four classes, and we make it fit the reference, we could paste it into our reference architecture so that your, your 500 developers, plus or minus 20, uh, will, will 
how do I say, see a very clear example of what it is uh, we're trying to do. And then, uh, again, the testing strategy. We have different testing strategies for our different classes. We have, um, mm -hmm. perhaps, every view class we have, we'll have a view inspector test of some kind. And then in mm -hmm. the future, we're going to need some smoke tests eventually with XCUI. Uh, I, I don't know how exactly we're going to do that. But once we, de once we decide what that is, we should write it down so, so those 500 folks aren't all doing it differently. Because in a company, you're going to have people writing XCUI tests. You're going to have people using View Inspector. You're going to have people doing no tests in the view layer. You're going to have people doing no tests anywhere. So it gets to be a big mess fast in a, in a company. So David, you, 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 this is the CTO pants we're trying to put on here. We've got to think, we gotta think big. <laughs> Well, is it time to write that reference architecture this week, or is that something we can do next month? I think it's. I think uh, it would be more fun to do the coding part, to be honest, because uh, I don't know that you've hired that 500 people yet, so we have a little no. time. Uh, but I, but I think at a certain point when we at least say, look, this is we think this is the right way to do that. We should copy that into that reference architecture, that and, and check it into code. And, uh, and then we move on with our lives and keep doing what we're doing. And then we want to change something, we go back to reference architecture and update it. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah. Okay. And I think that's all he had. So, yeah, that's what Taylor sent me from his pool. <laughs> well, you know, he was probably busy. Um, I, I don't know where he lives, but I, I think he lives on an airplane somewhere. <laughs> They're playing with a pool? Come on, he's not that rich, is he? <laughs> oh, no, I, I don't mean he lives uh, full-time on the airplane. I think he's he's constantly traveling on an airplane. Ah. And and so um, wherever he's living now... That's hard work being a tailor. <laughs> well, you know, I, suits are expensive. <laughs> now we know why. <laughs> yeah, and... And uh, I think I think on Twitter he told me I, I would I was a bum for uh, buying off the rack and having them uh, altered. So <laughs> he meant that with love, David. He meant that with love. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure he did. I mean, I, that's the way I took it. It's just you know. Um, Heads up, brings us back to Benjamins. <laughs> yeah, it's it's always about the Benjamins. Yes, yes, and, sir. So, All right. Uh, so what should we do um, here? Um, I think it is time to decide how to do this um, keeping track of uh, the runners. Okay. And so uh, I've been, I've been, how do, how do I do this? And I think what I want is that a play here, there is, um, a, a play has uh, what the, who the batter is and the at-bat outcome. Um, that's like whether they got a single, a double, an out or whatever. I think we want some more things in here for the runners on, uh, on first, second, and third that might be there. Um, got it. All right. And then they would have the, we would have the ability to add, um, what that runner did. Did the runner try to steal? Did they get thrown out? Um, trying to steal caught stealing is what that's called and stuff. So I think we want some, uh, some other properties. So this is a, this is a play instance for, and, uh, and then w this play instance is, uh, grouped in a inning? Is that where it goes? Sorry, I'm just trying yeah. to get the big picture there a little bit more. Big picture is uh, an inning okay. is made up of two halves. It's the top half and the bottom half. Okay. And um, there we have an array of plays. Okay. Um, right. And um, so that's Sounds good. Where, okay. Can we look at that story again? Is it um, possible? I'm trying to think if there's a way we could stick it somewhere um, so we can look at it when we work. Um, can you copy that into your copy-paste buffer? 
and uh, let's go find a unit test it should where we're gonna work and maybe paste it in as a comment for for a while. Yeah, that's what that's what you're telling me is we're gonna do something in play test. So maybe paste in there temporarily until we. I'll put comments around it so if Sweet. the compiler quits complaining. <laughs> um, we need compilable so we user stories. Test. This is new for me. All so right. um, I would not normally start in a test. I would start banging things into that play You class. wild man. Wild I, man. <laughs> that's, the way I, that's the way I live. But I'm learning my new ways. So here I want a new test. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to first put in a test placeholder. Because I don't know what this test is going to be called. Well, let's talk about it right now. Um, so when I read the story, it says I can associate the runner action with the batter. And uh, a runner action will be... So why don't we just, so this is a single play. So how about just call it, associate runner action. Um, okay, there's, there's the possibility of multiple runners. So do we care about which runner? Well, what's the simplest one to start with? Uh, a runner on first. Okay. And uh, you might want to, so associates ASS instead of ACC when you get it to it. Oh my goodness, ASS. Well, that's a form. That might work with my daughter. She's still trying to learn the rules of spelling, and so it's like, yeah, C's and S's. Yeah, I did never learn. I flunked spelling for 12 years in a row. <laughs> Well, it didn't. It wasn't a compilable language. What were you to do, man? <laughs> <laughs> I I latched on to a compilable language. There were only a few number of words I needed to learn how. Yeah. Uh, basic and and Fortran. Right, right. Easy. Okay, so um, I think we need to create an action or a play. A play. I'm sorry. We need to create a play. So yeah. um, here's a play. Can I copy and paste? I, I don't see the copy paste point. cops. Let's give it a try. Say something on the air t about the batter and a play, and um, <laughs> this play needs to have um, the player on first is going to um, try to steal. Okay. Um, and so, <clears throat> so be careful. You're an initializer, so don't. I don't want to overload your initializer. Is your initializer good enough for initializing? And now we need to tell it about the action. Oh, wow. That, I'm scratching my head on that, but okay. Be because you're saying do when, when this. You're, yeah. Um, oh, interesting. Um, here, I guess this would be, uh, action or something like that. Um, oh. and, uh, let's say that they are caught stealing, which is, I happen to That's know. That's wrong. They shouldn't steal, man. That's just so wrong. I don't, I don't, kids don't go out there and steal, even in baseball. All right. It's wrong. <laughs> well, you steal bases. And that's wrong, David. That's stealing. Borrowing's okay. <laughs> stealing's not. Okay. Um, this runner is going to try to run when uh, the ball is in play, but the batter hasn't hit. <laughs> what are we going to call that? And not stealing. Okay, please repeat what this is again. <laughs> the... Uh, the runner on first is going to try to go to the next base, advance to the next base. Okay. The batter doesn't hit. The batter didn't hit. That's a steal. That's a dirty thief. <laughs> right? Yeah. So CS means steal. Is that right? No, this is this. Uh, CS means cult stealing. 
Oh, cod stealing. Oh, my goodness. That means he was thrown out. Woo. Okay. So, so that's the action. I'm, I'm, uh, I think you're it, saying there's a problem somewhere, and I'm not quite c- connecting with that problem now. The problem. I, are, are we back to code, or are we ranting about um, cannot find batter? We need a batter for this place, so I've got to come up oh. here and grab this batter. Oh, okay. Why do we Can need I a batter? Can I do that? Oh, yeah, yeah, you got to bring it down there. All right. Yeah, you're kind of like stealing code from the other function. So, I'm going to get caught stealing now. Uh, yeah. All right. Here we are caught with play has no member first base runner. Is that the right thing? That's, there's not a verb in there. Aren't, aren't methods, shouldn't method be more of a verb? Oh, boy. Let's see here. That's an interesting point. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, if it's mutating... There's, so you're mutating this. I'm going to use some new terminology here. I'm still trying it out myself. Um, so object's job is to either be a factory of other objects, meaning you call a method and it gives you a new object back, or it mutates something internally. So in this case, we're mutating uh, something internally. So that would be, I believe that means it needs a verb. Yeah. Otherwise, a noun, if it's a, if it's a, if it's a factory object, it, it, it returns nouns. Uh, in this case, it needs a verb. So... Um, Okay, first base runner. Okay, so let's think about this API for a second. So what you, when you write first base runner, you're making me think that play is now going to have to have one for each base, right? That's another thing that you're kind of committed to when you write first base runner as a method. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> do you think it would be that, or do you want a generic thing that says, uh, what is it, report action, which is not very nice, but that's a verb, and then the action has caught stealing, and then the action takes a base as an argument. I, I'm, I'm asking here. I'm not trying to push you either way. That okay. You're either committing to making a lot of interfaces for all, each base or you're going to put that as an argument into the uh, method. Yeah, I was... Okay, my first simplest thing that could possibly work, kind of primitive obsession, was to <laughs> create one of these things for each base until um, I came up with a better solution. Okay. All right. Well, the good news is there's only a finite set of bases, so it's not like it's it's actually workable. Um, I want to caution you a little bit and say this: the simplest thing that can work might actually be one method that takes a parameter too. So, so I'm I'm open either way. If you know that one way is better than the other right now, I would go with it because I can't predict right now why that taking a parameter would make it more complicated. Okay, let's do the parameter method because. I can envision the other one, and I might learn something with the parameter method. All right, all right. so we need a verb now. So when we have a play, we're going to tell it something about, you called it an action. I don't know if that's like a baseball term or not. but um, No, it's just generic. All right. Runner advances. Advances, okay. Because that's really the advance, advance base and stuff is what we're talking about. Like, caught stealing is one, but the other one could be uh, A, B, four, uh, like in our previous example, which w- means advance base uh, four. by batter number four. Uh, okay. Cool. So now we probably need to say what base they started on, or does play know this? Does play know... Oh, let's think about this. Um, Play doesn't, but a long time ago, I had this concept of a situation that would keep that situational awareness. And I deleted that file because it wasn't being used. So I don't want to bring it back yet. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Um, I'm (laughs) thinking, I'm just thinking out loud here. So, So yeah, we could do this, but we need to pass in the base or play needs to know the base and right now you're saying you don't think it knows right now so let's not, don't worry about that let's pass it in and, and then maybe we'll discover something later okay um, what is base going to be here a string oh uh, yeah this is again where i'd stick with uh eventually it probably be an enumeration or something but yeah i'd stick with oh would enumeration be better, easier to build right now yeah we can enumerate the bases on our fingers there's not very many bases um yeah. rather than a string i would suggest not using a string if, if you're do you have are you good at enumerations in swift yeah let's just build an enumeration 
because it's finite. Uh, I don't like to use enumerations when the cases aren't very finite, but in this case, there's only a small set of bases. All right. The only other choice would be to actually create an object that's a base, but I, I'm not confident that that's a good use of time because <laughs> I don't know why I would do that yet. You asked me if I was good at it. That would mean that I could actually do it if I said <laughs> I said I was good at it. Yeah, because oh. right now I don't have the syntax in my head, so. <laughs> yeah. First base. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> we'll add more when we write more tests. You, you got enough. You don't want to overcommit here, David. We might just throw this whole idea away and go back to situations or I something. I don't like to start something. Oh, David, David, when you write the test for those other new enums, then you're, you can do it. But right now, I'm sorry, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and that basis should probably go into play, not into the test. Um. Uh, yeah, you're right. But that's okay. For now, it's all right. Maybe, again, this is a prototypical situation. We might change our mind. Okay. Something like that. And then... Um... Well, I, yeah. And let me talk to the audience about this a little bit. So, it's, audience, it's really quite serious that if, if David went down the road and wrote out a bunch of enums, like four of them, and later on we decide that that's not that great of an idea, David's going to be like a little bit more like, no, no. We, he's going to champion those enums because he bloody typed them all in there and he finished it. He's... So the more we invest time on something, the more reluctant we are to throw it away. So right now, we don't know for sure that an enum's the best way. Like maybe we'll change it to uh, a strategy pattern or, where the base is going to be an object that, that handles it rather than an enum. But uh, uh, so, so we want to keep our, our prototypes as light as possible. And right now, we only need a first base. So let's see how it goes. Okay. Um, and then... Um, I don't know what to assert here. It seems like I'm oh. asserting. Okay, so how do we get feedback that the base got stolen? Do we do we have to ask the play object? Hey, play object. Yeah. Um, give us some information about the state. Okay. Um, and that would be runner advance sort of stuff. We would, um, I don't know how we would do this. Uh, yeah, I'd have to go look at the play object because I'm not sure right now. It doesn't have any of this. So oh, okay. did runner advance and we would say um, that something like this was in the runner advance or something, I guess. I don't know what that interface would look Let, like. <laughs> let's go look at play object for a moment. Okay. Because uh, I'm thinking we just want to print it out. <laughs> to string, whatever that's called. I forgot what it's called in Swift, but. Um... Oh, that's, yeah, that's a hard thing. Let's take this enum with us. Okay. And put it over there in the play object where it belongs. All right. Okay. So all right. So add. So here's our play object. We have integers. We have IDs, description, batter, and outcome. So when the when a runner advances, what's going to happen? Is the runner is that that runner's not a batter? Is it? That's somebody else. Is that right? Right. Right. It's it's a separate individual person on the field that can make decisions to steal bases and and do things and get called out all independently of uh, the batter, so. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, so this is where we're, 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 this, where we're being forced to ask questions about our design. Um, yeah, so the first idea is like, well, we could just do like, when you ever want to print out a play object in the future, you could, you'd like this information out in a text situations, and that would be one way to test this. Um, another way is to add some kind of signaling, um, which, I'm not sure, okay, what's the easiest thing that would work? So when we run, move the runner, <clears throat> that's gotta be stored in something, and that something's gotta, we gotta be able to ask the play object about the status of things. So this is, this is forces us to really think about some big design here. So when you have a play object, what is it you wanna get out? Do you wanna get out, like it knows a lot of stuff. It knows about the runner, it knows about the outcome of that bat. It has an ID, and it knows about 
Um, steals. Is this steal? Oh, let me think about this. It sounds to me like a, a play is a... Um, is this play object going to be used for other things too? Like, is this the play object persists for the duration of the situation? All yeah. around the like, there aren't separate plays. That that that's one. Is it one play with the runner? Like, okay, in the scenario where the batter is running to first and somebody's stealing to second, or <laughs> that didn't make sense. But a batter is running to first and is somebody stealing from second to th from third to home. Uh, is that one play as well? Well, it happens within one play, and okay. um, it's recorded in various places, but, um, it, yeah, it's kind of like a unit of things. Okay. Um, and, and, yeah, I... Oh, there it is. You have a I'm baseball play to the start of the pitch. It, but I think what I'm saying is that, that that play is going to contain everything that happened within... Um, yeah, between pitches, it looks like, except that a steal could happen even without a pitch. So yeah. that's tricky. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So this is going to record a lot of stuff. And um, I think in your play object, you're going to need to ask it for some status. And that status is going to be about um, who's on what base. Is that the most, is that all we care about is who's on what base? Um. Yeah, and whether or not the play is over, I guess, but yeah. Yeah, okay. So so it sounds like we need an API that tells us who's about the, the who's on what base. Um and uh so you were you were back at your unit test, you were writing something. Can we go back to the unit test for a moment and think about that? Um so did runner advance is one way. Um maybe that's pretty particular because there could be multiple runners and you don't know which runner uh, unless we provide the runner information. If we only care about the bases, I think we just need to ask who's on what base and then it returns back that player object maybe. Is that fair? I mean, that's one idea is you say, yeah. a play dot who's on second. <laughs> yeah. And we could go to the who jokes now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then it returns it. a player, or 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 it returns nothing if nobody's on there, something like that. Um, I'm kind of like, um, who's on who's on base? Okay, yeah. Um, but I then need to say what base again. So you're using your base uh, enum. Okay. Um. Um. Yeah. So we stole, right? Oh, he still did. He see a before. Uh, you changed the example. I'm not sure what we're doing here. Yeah, so, I did. Okay, you know, whatever example you want. That's that's the thing you want to ask feed for feedback on. All right, we started out with kind of the caught stealing. Yeah. Go um, back up to your uh, line 48. That's where the caught stealing should be. Line 48? Uh, 45, I'm sorry. Sorry, 45. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. We said that he was caught stealing. So yeah. and, and the person we'll... on first base is caught stealing. He was running to second. Yeah, there we are. So, and uh, so now, <laughs> David, guess what? You get to add to your enum. <laughs> you should be so happy now. It's like, <laughs> wait, hot damn. <laughs> Why do I get to add to my enum? Because we now need to ask who's on base, second base. Unless you're going to ask who's on first base, and that's good enough. That could be too. Oh, uh, heck. Because if he's caught stealing... He didn't make it to second base, and he's not on first base. Wow, there we go. Okay, so, but yeah, you get to add your enum. <laughs> I, this is getting complicated. We're doing something wrong. All right, well, what's, what's an easier way to do this? I don't know. Well, we can ask about the player, but the thing is we don't know about players in this, do we? Well, we know the player at bat. 
And yeah. at some point, you you got to know who's on base, but okay. we don't have record of that anywhere yet in our system. So do you want player to just say, hey, player uh, James Gosling, where, what base is he on? What base is Gosling on? And then if it returns nothing, that means he's caught stealing, he's out. Anything could have happened. He's out, though. He's not on base. No, that's too indeterminate. Um. Well, you know somebody, the action is runner's advances, right? Yeah. Pretty and sure that's... The play has to know that, otherwise it can't actually do this. Um, but you not, then want to ask it a question. So... You want to either get it stayed out with like a print string or you're going to have to ask a specific question about either the player who, who, who advances, who we don't know, <laughs> but it knows, or we got to ask it about the bases. I mean, what else? I don't know what else you have. So, um, I'm not hearing anything to do in, in, those, in those things here. Well, the who's on base so, was working for me is what I'm saying. And you can oh, ask okay. for first base, second base, and third base and ho if you want, but to make sure that the runner did get caught stealing. How else would so you do it, though? That's I don't, I don't see another way. I mean, yeah. there could be... Oh, okay, okay, okay. How about this? So here's another idea. Totally different idea. Different strategy. Um, wow. Okay, this is... This might be easy, but let's talk about it a little bit. So, when player when a play happens, like this runner advances, and the action happens, um, do we notify people of certain things? Does play does play notify people of certain events? So, what's an event in a play? Can you think of it like from a baseball standpoint, are there events in baseball? <laughs> yeah. Um, the umpire will make a call at, at the, the throw to second base and he'll call the runner out. So the umpire makes the call about whether or not he was caught stealing or not. Is that okay? Kind of well, that's right. With these umpires. Yeah. So what if we, uh, listen, listen to that event and and see if he got caught out uh does that make sense would that that's an event driven design as opposed to um that's that's an event driven design which is usually nice because now the play has to tell us or tell whoever is subscribing to its events about what happened it no um, longer requires us to ask it tells us which is which is kind of nice because we don't have to hmm. yeah i have no idea how to implement a, an event driven system yeah. let me think about baseball that. is there what's the easiest way to do this i would say there's probably a standard swifty way to do this um in lieu but, of that because i don't yeah I don't, there, there is um the observer pattern is one that Apple is very fond of and all of their other event driven things follow the observer pattern. Okay. But when I, when I think about the context of this thing of scoring a game, somebody observed some human observed that the runner on first ran and got thrown out and they're going to have to mark it on their score sheet that that event happened. And that event is kind of coming to the game as, as a pre-recorded, this is what happened. It's the outcome of things that had, had already happened. So I don't think we have an event there. I think we have a, an outcome already. Okay, you're saying runner advances always has an outcome? Yeah. That could be. But that's another that, idea. Didn't think of that one. And that outcome is actually called stealing. That 
that was the outcome of the runner advances attempt and he was caught stealing all right so i'm on a scorecard and i'm marking the outcome i'm saying yeah. he got caught stealing because i observed it um and so i need to mark it on the sheet and uh so when i tap on the scorecard it communicates to the to the play eventually that the outcome is it's telling it the play that what the outcome is and i guess we are too so we know the outcome yeah the only question is is we don't know how we're stateful uh and why would we be stateful we would be stateful so it could output the right object on the screen when it's rendering um and when we think about the view layer, the view layer has to work with this play object and figure out, oh, something happened. What do I render? And and so that to me goes back to the presentation strategy of, of that we could return something that represents, okay, maybe that, maybe, okay. So I was talking about text strings just to make testing easier, but maybe it, the, the, oh, man, this is weird. So when the, Runner advances and the action is caught stealing. <clears throat> when when that happens, what I would love to have happen on the screen for the person, the fan that's watching it, is for the icon on first base, a little weeble or something with a nice cute face, would run towards second base and um, the action would then you know, X him out because he was caught stealing before he got the second base. Okay. Um, can it return an icon then? And I don't yeah. mean it at the, the, the graphic. It would be an enum that would be eventually be transmutated into the icon in the view layer. Yeah, yeah. I, I think. The only weird thing I have is that I'm, we're talking to runner advances. We're giving it the action. We're telling it what base. We're telling it all this information. And I don't know what service it's providing to us right now, other than listening to us. Because <laughs> it, it, it would just return that, hey, I heard you, <laughs> which it always will. That's very deterministic. So I don't, I don't see how that would be helpful. Yeah. Um, well, okay. Are there error states when we, uh, when would it refuse to agree with us? Is there an action it would refuse to agree with us on? So I'm no, filling out the scorecard wrong? <laughs> Is that allowed? Well, um, yeah, I don't know how we'll deal with that. Um, I don't want to think that that hurts my head. Okay, so we'll shelf that one. Um, yeah. Huh. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what do we get out. So I guess we just need to pick something for now. Whoops knowing that we're probably going to have to come up with a better idea later. Yeah. That, um, I, I don't know how to test this because basically we're putting all our inputs or what we should get back out of it. Yes. Um, now that's at this time when we get it animating on the screen, we would expect some other things, but uh, right now. Well, oh, so I still think, you want the play to persist some information. Is that right? Yeah. You want it to remember this? Uh -huh. Because, let me think about this. This play is only for this play. So you got to have a way to get the data back out for the graphical user interface, and you got to have a way to get it back out for us to test it. Um, I, so I, that kind of makes me think about either a string representation, you know, a play print that and then test against that or or a structure that it would return to the view layer uh, maybe how about so here's a here's a suggestion and I don't know if it's a great idea or a terrible idea but it's or, or in between so what if we return a structure that started this representation of of, of, of the play It started the representation. Well, uh, because we're going to have a lot of stuff in there eventually, but right now we only have. So, so what would it be? Is again, you want to render this to screen, so it's got to update who's on what 
space for that tiny little diamond. Um, and uh, that could be represented as a structure, I, I'm sure. After that, I'm not sure how more detail that would get. Does that make any sense to you? You'd go, it's the same thing as asking the, putting a play into a print and it would print text representation. Well, a different way would be to return a data structure, which is a struct, which, which is actually a better idea because at least the data structure can go to the view layer and tell the view layer, hey, this is what's going on. And the view layer goes, okay, I know how to draw that. All right, so I'm, I'm going to, um, at the risk of being wrong, I'm going to say that who's on base is that call. It's okay. the print call, and in my XC excerpt, I'm going to say um, that that's what I want it to do. I want my who's on base to be kind of print print the play in the situation of the game. Yeah, and then. What I want to see is that it has a cult stealing for somebody on first, and I don't know how that's going to be represented, but so in the in the you showed me the diamond, right? And the diamond mm -hmm. would show first base, be a red line, and then I'm not sure what else, but that's that's the graphic representation, correct? Do I got that yeah. right right? The graphic representation, which is up on the screen yeah. um, would uh, kind of be like this uh, red line from third yeah. to home. Yeah. Um, but it would be from only home it would to be first. from first to second. Oh, it would be from first to second. Okay. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that helps a ton. So there we are. So you need some representation. And uh, um, yeah, I would just, uh, okay, now. <sighs> wow, this is interesting. So the play has probably got to represent everything in that picture, in that one cell. In so that play diamond, is like that yeah. cell? Uh-huh. That's and, an uh, at-bat. Sorry? That is an at-bat. <laughs> the cell's an at-bat? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit more. Um, so Diamond here, Damon, uh -huh. player 18, got a single 1B, got a single on his at-bat. So it's his at-bat, but it's also his at-run. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. And it's, the, it's his life as being a player that, that's live. And he got, a, first he got a single, and then uh, SB2, stolen base. Uh, he, got, he got the stolen base when uh, Bellhorn was up. So he stole second base okay. successfully. Uh, don't steal, kids. Okay. Um, yes. And then he was, <laughs> he was advanced by batter number three. Uh, yeah. That's Ramirez. So when Ramirez did something, he got a, a single. Mm -hmm. Then um, Damon went to third. Uh, and then he was thrown out. Right. Well, when, well the main point uh, is, is you need Ramirez a data structure to represent the the – the the plays uh or you need to spend a lot of time talking to the plays talking to its api um but i'm suggesting data structures the way to go that way you can pass that state onto the view layer and the view layer then figures out how to represent the this caught on, caught stealing so so um i don't know about who's on base because that doesn't really speak to me personally but uh -huh. You, let's let's try that. I mean, that's just the name of a function, right? Yeah. So so in this case, we're talking about um, this should be a builder, so it really should start with a noun. Um, but uh, what would you – okay, who's on base? I'm going to go with you, you on that. And so it's going to return a data structure. So in that data structure, you're looking for caught stealing at some field in the data structure. Um, let me let me borrow the, some control here for a second. Request All right. Control. Oops. I had to approve the, uh, you're stealing my mouse. <laughs> All right, let me go to your bank account first. 
So, so I, data structure wise, what would that look like? So would it be like, I mean, you got, you're, you're really close here. We got graphical user interface, which is, which is a type of structure. And now we need to like put it back into a data structure. So cut okay. stealing is a string, but what would that yep. be a, a attributed to? Is I think it's attributed to first base. Okay. So it would it would mean runner on first base was caught stealing. Was there a runner on second base? And that would be kind of blank. Right. And so, um, so all the bases would end up in here, I suppose. Yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. And that would be yeah. second and third. There's blank. only blank. Okay, second, yeah. third, fourth, and fourth. Okay, and so we could write all that out, but we don't need to go too far. So right yeah. now, your data structure, in order to support this, if you think this is, you know, if you're if you're with me on this, we just need a data structure. So we need a name for this data structure. I don't know what it's called. Play bases. Yeah, it does look like bases. Okay. So and it would have, it would list all the bases, and it would have annotation for each of the base would that yeah. probably get us what we need i think so it's a start yeah i'm Moving a little less right. just to be honest i'm a little less excited about using string representation but uh let's not get too hung up on that because yeah um i don't yeah what i yeah i don't i don't want to get hung up on that right now because we're in such a a a, a mix of how do we model the dynamic nature of baseball <laughs> for right. this game. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, there we are. So let's just start with the first base because we need that for this test. And uh, when you write tests that need others, then we well, then we can add more. Okay. All right. So so now, I guess that's all right. I'm still a little bit puzzled whether runners advances, runner advances would return to us the basis structure or it would be chilling out till we ask it. See, we're, do, we're either going to be told there's an update, but that requires advance. So right now we're going with ask. So, so I like this concept of, of you told me not to change the initializer um, for play. And... Um, I, then we did the runner advances, and I, I like that later. I didn't say this because it's it's non-deterministic, and, and the initializer has to be deterministic. And we don't know during that at bat how many runners will advance, uh, how many will get caught stealing, and that sort of thing. So it has to be indeterminate um, by it, we can't determine it at init time. Um, cool. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense thing. to me. So I, I agree 100. percent That everything's got to everything can't happen in an initializer. So uh, do you want to put this into play? Play, and yeah. then we'll finish our test, and then I think uh, we'll have a, a failing test you case. Want me pretty to soon. do it? Yeah, go ahead, because I don't. Yeah. What you're saying? Okay. So um, this structure and then um, the play needs the who's on yeah. function. And who's on, are you saying that's going to return everybody who's on a base? Uh, I mean, it's just going to tell you about the bases. Well, so it's a little it weird. A who's on usually means structure. you're going to ask me a specific particular who, but I think what you're saying, it's a g generic who <laughs> it's any who. <laughs> <laughs> the any who. Okay. So it needs to return. Um, the structure basis, which is, um, It needs to return that, and we don't actually have one yet. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, so for now, mm, yeah, that's true. You're going to have to have a... So don't try to make the test pass yet. We're just trying to get the, the thing to compile. Yeah, okay. 
you could just return, go ahead and return nil for now on, on that. I think, I assume Swift will let us do that. And, oh, it'll probably complain about optionals and all that though. Huh, I would go, I just knew up, a knew up a base is right there on that line. Um, new up a base. How yeah, just do you type do new, a or sorry, bases, capital. Yeah, you got it. And it, and it, <laughs> there we are. No, you don't call it yet. You put parens on it. And I think that creates a new one and passes yeah. it back. Yeah, you got it. So that should be good. And, uh, my syntax might be bad. Oh yeah. You got to, so the syntax on bases isn't right. I have, I got it completely java up. It's, it's not right at all. I started with string. It should say first base, colon, string. That's completely wrong. <laughs> yeah. It's... It looked good to me, but. Yeah, well, it's because we're both also writing Java code. <laughs> string. <laughs> and just, that's it, right? It is struct. You don't initialize it. You just leave it. I don't know if we have to yeah. put a var or if we just leave it like that. I haven't done this. I've never done a struct. So let's try this out. I think that's, I think. Oh, yeah, uh, what's a var? Var, yeah. We need the var. Um, because it's going to be a variable. It, we might change it several times. Um, I don't really know. And then we're going to have other let's, let's, bases let's, let's in Let's try there. it and see. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, which of these I see. Things yeah, maybe we will. If we're going to have one struct we're moving around, yeah, that, that could be what you said is true. Uh, what's this? Basis is ambiguous for lookup. It might not be now because we we're, we weren't compiling yet. So uh, what's that mean? We are compiling. We're trying to compile. It's ambiguous I'm, for I'm the lookup in this context for type lookup. Um, why would that be a problem? Is it because we? It isn't order dependent, is it? Should be look at the whole file. So struct bases is there. And, oh, okay. So you have public, all right. Uh, <laughs> well, we got two of these. Oh, well, that would be a reason. <laughs> That's not good. Okay, yeah. we've got to have a base enum. Oh, yeah. Is there a way? Base yeah. list as the enum. Yeah. Enums can have a raw value, and the enum does not have a raw type. I think that means we're supposed to put a string out here. Okay, okay we're getting better. Yeah. Um, now, argument for first base in call. Yeah. Bases. So you, have, you have to say something about that pro property. So just put in a string. Empty string is fine. All right, now it should work. Oh, do we have to say the name? Does it first base? Uh, you got to give it a, yeah, that, <laughs> what it said. Okay. Yay. All right. Now let's back to the test and play test. And I think. We found out last time the only way to get playtest to run. Well, well to we're not. We we have to change our who is who's on base to work with the struct. So you need to do a dot something and talk to the property to see if it's see, caught stealing or not. Yeah, forty. I'm mean, gonna need to dot that baby. First base. There you go. Uh, first base. All right. Now well, I think we have a compilable. Oh, that's here. Base oh, that's called base list. Base list. I'm not sure we should have our enums named list, but we can quibble about that later. <laughs> what would you name it? Because a list is a list. You see what I mean? But uh, um, oh, yeah. this yeah. is an enum. So I, I'm, I'm afraid. Gosh, we don't we have, have a I, I don't really want to use the word enum on it because that's kind of lame too. But that's yeah. <laughs> that's kind of where I'm at because I don't think it's a list either. But well, maybe I'll have to get out the dictionary here and look at the thesaurus and see what else there is. Base choice collection. That's kind of base. Yeah, something. list is good for now. Yeah. All right. Play has no All member. Right. The runner problem advanced. is we now have uh, runner advances yeah. as a call that we didn't implement.
You with me there? I got to get the, uh, got to show all this great coding we're doing here. Okay. I fell asleep at the switch. All right, now we have a runner advances. Yeah, we got trying to functions. do this. All right. And I don't know how to make this guy build. Well, he built then because it changed. Argument passed to call that takes no argument. Oh, we have yeah, two arguments need, on that one, by the way. Yeah, I need these two arguments in my play. Runner advances. I need... Um, Base list. Uh, this needs to be a string. Yeah. Not a string in a string, but a string. Is there a finite set of those annotations, by the way, for scorecards? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'll probably enum those eventually too, because st strings are too primitive. I don't like to be obsessed with oh, them. Oh, I, ha I have them down here. Any of them. Mm. So, holy smokes! At bat so, outcomes or whatever these are, I'm not sure what these yeah, are called. Yeah, they're at bat outcomes, um, and uh, those okay. are most of the kind of general ones. There's people with all kinds of different, and then baseball has tons of exceptions for everything. So, okay, well, if it's a finite okay, list, so, yeah, I think at enum list, we'll move to that later after we get this kind of making sure it's going the right direction. So is the test uh, compiling and failing now? Oh, I'm in the wrong. That's Oops. player yeah. test. That's supposed to be the play test. Let's see. Build succeeded. Test succeeded. And it's not turning this green, so I'm going to hit the run again and see what happens. Okay. Cool. All right. And it said, null string is not called stealing. Yeah. Okay. So let's, uh, let's make a pass. So most of our effort in this uh, episode was about the design we had to figure out. That's all right, though. I mean, <laughs> it was going to happen whether uh, you were um, writing the test first or whether you were trying to write the code, uh, the product code first. Yeah, um, I, I'm. I'm haven't. So um, yeah, here we've got um, the failing test, yeah. but the the problem is up here in runner advances. We're passing in the stuff, but doing nothing with yep. it. Yep. All right, let's let's uh, add some features. Okay, so we're here in runner advances, and we've got our action and our base list, but we need a place to persist it, right? Yeah. So, um, I, I'm trying to not get um, the TDD police on my case, but well, you have a failing what test case, so what's the problem? <laughs> So you have a you have a you have an action. Um, so the simplest thing will work is just put a, a a private. I think you can keep it internal. Private uh, string up there, and and put an outcome. Uh, I, I know this has got to be bigger than than just one piece, but uh, runner outcome or something like that. Whatever. Use your domain knowledge of baseball for this one. Okay. And uh, go ahead and make it private because there's nobody else in the world needs to know about this. See, I, okay. In this case, this is truly private. This is this is something that we're doing internal management of. All right. So so now you want to store that in there. Runner outcome equals action. Uh, we're gonna need, yeah. And for now, we can ignore the base. <laughs> okay. 
and uh, go ahead and run the test. And I guess we probably have one more step we got to do. So the who's on base, we need to add some functionality to that. Who's on base dot first base. Yeah, we yeah. don't have any functionality who's on base. So we got to go back and, and add some functionality in there. Who's on base? Return first base. Okay, now now here, you need to like check your runner outcome and then return appropriate base, <laughs> bases object. So if you do an if statement, say if runner outcome. Oh, yeah. Okay, this thing should be. Bigger than that, yeah. We, we should have um, this this structure up here, shouldn't we? Probably. Basic structure. Yeah. Yep. Good idea. Let's go ahead and do that. I was going to try to hold off on that, but I don't think it's going to be simple if we do that. So I think it's simple to do that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. It now has that. And then the at, let's see, run, where's our outcome one? Uh, uh, what do we call it? Uh, runner advances should be runner outcome dot something. Yeah. There we are. And now it's persisted. Yeah. Okay, except that it's always returning first base. Yep, so um, you can return that object and now you should get a passing test. Okay. So returning a private object outwards, that's something we should think about. It's not necessarily the right thing to do, but it's okay for now. Uh, keep it in mind. Because the other people can change our modify our, our, our classes internals, so we should really return a, a, a copy of that. But uh, uh, yeah, you got it. So, but let's just get the test passing for now. Um, later, we could write a test that, that checks to see if it is returning a copy or not, and and, and then fail because we're we're not. Hmm. Okay, so it didn't pass. Now that surprises me. Why is that? Self runner. Outcome not initialized. Oh. Swift compiler error. Oh, we didn't compile. So the the the, the bases up there in private var. Um, go ahead and make one. It, it should go ahead and instantiate one because it's a var. I, I think you need an equals. Yeah, you need a runner outcome equals bases will work. Swift will figure out your type. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then, oh, okay, damn it. So we got to initialize everything in it. So, or we create an initializer. Um, go ahead and initialize it for now. Make it, make an empty string in there just to get this done. Uh, but yeah, I think we'll probably want to put an initializer in our struct later. Oh, we have to say that too. Yeah, we definitely want to put an initializer because this is a lot of hoo-ha. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, did it compile? Not sure. All right. All right, so that test passed. Okay, so maybe we do a little refactoring and then because we got our we got a design in place, um, I think the first thing I do is let's get let's put an initializer on that structure so we don't have to <laughs> grow that uh, in our class. So it's a giant line of everything that's in that in that um, basis class. Yeah. So struct bases line forty eight. Because we want our basis class to be responsible for initializing itself rather than everybody who's using it. Sweet. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm sad that we're going to have. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's probably good enough for now. And then in our. Then we can use it up in our. Uh, our. Um, yeah, up there. Then we can get rid of this, right? Yeah, I hope so. Because <laughs> that'd be annoying. Okay, cool. And then that test will still work the same way. Um, 
we'll run them all and see if we broke anything, which I can't imagine we did. But nobody ever does. <laughs> nobody ever. <laughs> Show me a developer who says, "Oh, I broke something." Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm, I feel nervous. The most <laughs> optimistic people in the world. You have to though. It's just a crazy job, uh, working with technology that barely anybody barely understands. So, um, okay, cool. So I have a feeling. There's a, there's a couple things in on my mind. I don't know about you. Number one, uh, using those enums is a lot better than using strings. So that's a refactoring. Number okay. two, we know that our runner advances is rather limited right now. So we could add more tests to make that less limited, and we could live with strings. So I, I, I'd say we have in my so in my view worldview we have time for maybe getting one more test running and passing for we should probably. Uh, call it a night at least for the live stream um and i would say either we go down the path of going to the enums or we go down the path of making runner advances a little bit more smarter than just first base um yeah i I'd, I'd say let's quit for the evening here okay <laughs> well that's a third option then <laughs> <laughs> as a as a third option let's quit for the evening and um take a break um and that we did spend an awful lot of time trying to figure out what the interface to multiple runners and stuff is. And I'll, I'll admit that for the longest time, I had no idea what we were going to do and how to do it. Even how to do it. I didn't even know how to do it. So I guess we've come up with one solution, whether or not it's a good solution or not. Well, we'll, keep using it and see if it works. Yeah. I'm glad we're, so we avoided going primitive obsession because we got a struct. So that's one th key point, I think. Uh, the other key point is we put a new private in there to demonstrate we're encapsulating that, that primitive. Um, and we know we can switch away from strings when we want to because you said the magic words. You said that uh, all those, I don't know what you call it, outcomes are, are Roughly a finite set, we give or take a few others. <laughs> so, so I guess the enums or something else. I, and right now, enums work for me. So I'm not, I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've got the else. structure here. I can probably do a little bit on this and get this flushed out. Um, so that that actually, I have been dreading this point of trying to figure out how to deal with runners because everything else is so deterministic but the runners throw dice on the field every time. And, and uh, so I, I had no idea how modeling it was going to work. So um, I think it's very workable, some, whether it's the, the, the best design out. or not, I don't know, but, it, but it's definitely, I don't see anybody, any, you give that data structure, the, what do we call it? Basis to a, mm -hmm. a view layer. Anybody should be able to write work with that structure uh and represent it some way yeah so, so i'm pretty happy about that um right. Good. Yeah, i can't think of anything else i don't think there's anything major uh i i feel like is from this a story demonst done sorry is this story done not until we can see it in the card let me see here we, well, well okay. number one we only have one base we <laughs> so we got to have we're not done with that because we need more bases what is this? All right. Yeah. Um, sorry. In my optimistic worldview, I had already gone through and gone, okay, I know how to, I've got one base. Now I can do second and third. Right. Nobody has to ever stand on home plate. So you don't worry about that. Oh, right. Um, so yeah, that's, that's good. So um, I think this story is on its way and it was always blocking me. I didn't know how to handle uh, the issue, and at least I've got something that's working now. Yeah, it was a little tricky. I'll admit to it. Getting that once we had to write the test, that brought the the hard part right up to the front. Oh, we told it something. Now, how do we get the information out? Oh, we don't know yet. Oh, now we have to invent a a way to a, a, some kind of way to communicate with this object about the outcome, and so we did. So yeah, cool. Thanks, Lance. Yeah, this is. Being very instructional, I'm I'm getting it. I'm starting <laughs> to get it. Um, my wife, who who teaches uh, 
and coaches situational leadership, which is oh, yeah? Uh, a, yeah, a style of thing. She, uh, she recognized, I, I told her about this and she was like, oh, you're in the developmental aspect number two, two of four. Uh, you start out with the beginner newbie, very excited, and then you go into the kind of uh, knows a little bit and is now disillusioned with all the work that they <laughs> now know that they, and, and the unknowns that they now know about. <laughs> right, right. Um, and so with test-driven development, I think there's that definite D2 phase of situational leadership where you go, oh my gosh, I'm not sure these tests are helping me any. They seem to be slowing me down. Yeah. And that he's like, that's classic. Um, right, right. Too. And, and to be a master, you've got to move up to three and then four. And so, yeah, long ways to go. And, and that's a classic example of, as a developer, I could say, that test really slowed me down because I spent so much time writing it. But really, you spent a, we spent a lot of time designing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was all designed. Yeah. Um, I mean, what the alternative would have been, we would have gone to the code, we would have wrote a bunch of stuff. Maybe it would have been a bad idea, but we wouldn't have known quite so fast. So I think we fleshed out our good ideas and bad ideas faster by um, writing the, that, using the test as a structure. Yeah. Well, hey, man, have a New Year's coming up. Uh, yeah. This is the end of the show for today. We'll see everyone next in the next New Year, 2021. <laughs> 